If you've been following my videos for a while, you know that I enjoy the photography side of things just as much as the makeup. So today I wanted to walk through some of my favorite tricks because a lot of people think that you need expensive equipment. You don't. I'm using very cheap lights. In some cases, I'm using sweet wrappers to create these kind of contrasting lights. So I wanted to show you today a few basic little tricks to take a very plain, uninteresting background and make it interesting with light. Before we get into any of the lights, the first thing I do is start to look at texture. I'm assuming that you have a very plain background, doesn't matter what the color is, but in general, the background tends to be flat and not have a ton of texture on it. So you want a contrast. And my favorite way to do this is just to scrunch my hair up with pins. Now I have no idea what I'm doing. So at some point before I start doing makeup on other people, hopefully next year, I want to see if I can do a hairdressing course. Online Makeup Academy sponsor this video to talk about their special effects course, but I had a look at their other ones and I kind of want to do the hairdressing course. Next year, I want to start doing a photography series on other people, creating these big sets, doing the makeup, the hair, the photography on other people. So I can get away with being a little bodgy with my own hair. I can't do that with other people. But anyway, moving on from the hair, now we're going to move on to the light. With light, you have several tricks at your disposal. The color of the light and how intense it is. So by blocking it off, you can create a much more subtle soft shade just on the edge of your face so that it doesn't wash everything out if a light is very bright try and put something like a muslin cloth over it though do be aware that if you do this you need to make sure that this light doesn't heat up because otherwise it is a fire hazard you do not want to risk it and you can also change the color as you can see this is just a cheap little six pound ring light so I've got blue on one side of my face and yellow on the other and then one which is focused on the center of my face if I go blue it's just too much. If I go yellow, I look jaundiced. So by going neutral, it just works better with those two opposing colors. And like I mentioned with the intensity, you don't just have to use a cloth. You could use a piece of baking paper. You could just use your new glasses prescription to block off that light. So you can see this side, it's just too bright. But if I block it off just a bit, you get a little bit of that color and it just makes the photo more interesting and doesn't wash out that side of your face. And then the final trick is just to use a torch. You can use your phone torch and then shine that on anything which has a textural interest, nothing flat. So if you have hair which is sticking out in all directions, maybe you have some chiffon or some tool that you're going to wrap around you, having light focused on that is going to make it more interesting. But just be careful how you point the light because you can either look cool or you can look like you know where the bodies are hidden. So choose wisely. So now I know what I'm doing with the light. I have blue on one side, yellow on the opposite color, neutral in the center. And now what I need to do is just figure out where I want that light focused. So I'm going to use a torch just to try and pick up the light on the back of my head. And then I'm going to be moving that mirror to block off that yellow light just to highlight the very edge of my face. Now I did talk a little bit earlier about the online makeup course, which is sponsoring this video. And as you know, I like to talk about things that I'm actually interested in. And these courses are actually amazing. I couldn't believe how thorough it was. For starters, they actually show you how to do makeup on all different skin tones, which is a massive bugbear of mine. You cannot call yourself a makeup artist if you cannot do the makeup of anyone who sits in your seat. But they also cover set etiquette, how to make bald caps, how to do injuries, illnesses, prosthetics, things like how would you work with a director to create a character. And it's an incredibly comprehensive course that you can then go back to at any point just to refresh it. At the end of the course, you get a proper makeup qualification and because it's online, you can just do it at your own speed. If you need to take a week, a month or half a year's break, you can do it and you can always go back and refresh your memory if you want to. Going back to the photography side of things, the first thing you need to do once you've taken all your photos is make everything the size of a postage stamp. This is just graphic design 101. If it doesn't look good when it's the size of a postage stamp and if it can't grab your attention when it's that size, it's not going to look better when it's bigger. So select your photos when they're this size and then blow them up. Now, this is where rule number two comes in. Always take more photos than you need because things go wrong. Typically for me, this is where I haven't managed to get it completely in focus. One of the things that happened to me the most is that they're just not in focus. You think, oh, that looks great. You zoom in and it's not in focus. Or it looks great as a thumbnail and you blow it up and you realize you've got ax murderer eyes. So just take more photos than you think you'll need. It's better to have too many than not enough.
And then there's the third step. What is the purpose of this particular photo? Now, in this case, this isn't a character look. If it was a character look, I would stick more with this photo. But because it's a makeup look, the whole purpose of this is to try and showcase the makeup. So you kind of need to be more bland, if that makes any sense. It's not about you and you looking at the camera and trying to create a character with your eyes. You're trying to show the makeup on your eyes. So that is why I'm gonna go for the second photo as opposed to the first. One of the first things I do is take the dodge tool and add some highlight to the eyes. So anywhere the light is naturally reflecting, I'm just going to add a little bit more light to that so that there's more contrast because I know that I'm going to be making part of the face not in the light so much. So I need there to be that contrast and the highlight in the eyes so that it's still drawing the viewer's attention to it. Otherwise it just kind of fades into the background. And the next step is where I just play around. I'm going to be lowering the contrast. I'm going to be lowering the brightness until I see something which grabs my attention. Now in this case, I really like how there's that streak of yellow light on the left side of my face and then how behind where my hair is, you can see all this blue lights just reflecting on all the different hairs. So I want to take that and make it more interesting. Now my favorite way to do this is I create a second layer. I lower the brightness to the level that I want and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase part of that picture because I don't like this center part. I want this to be a different color. I want the skin to still be visible in the original tone that it was in. So I'm going to remove that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding light. So I've just selected a section of that picture. I'm going to feather the edges so that it isn't a harsh line. And then I'm going to invert that selection. So instead of just this strip here, it's going to select everything else outside of it. Now that that's selected, I just lower the brightness very, very slowly and just by a little bit of contrast, it's going to make it look like I had a particular card shape cut out over the lights. Now obviously you could still do this when you're taking the photography and cut out a pattern, put it over the light, but I prefer to do this digitally because I'm less likely to make mistakes where maybe my hand wasn't in quite the right position and the shadow is just a little bit too far to the left or too far to the right and it just means that I've got a lot more control over the final product. If I wanted to boil this process down into its most simple explanation, it would be that I take the original photo, I make multiple layers of it, copies of that photo, and just have them layered up on top of each other. I change each one of those layers into different colors, lights, and shadows, and then I erase sections to expose the photo underneath. Because this is a makeup look, and part of my eye is in a shadow, one of the things I'll always do in this case is go in with the burn tool and make the outside of my eye a little bit darker to create some contrast and also the iris. By making the iris darker, you make the highlights appear brighter because you want to draw the attention to that part of your face. So contrast is always one of my favorite ways to do this. And then lastly, we have final touches. When it comes to things like removing spots or blackheads, I don't tend to touch those unless I think they're distracting. If people can see that I have a few spots and a few blackheads, that's fine because it's normal. But if there is a spot where I've applied blush and it makes me look a little bit like it's not blush, more like I've been bitten by a bug, then I will remove that. And if there's a broken pixel on the photo because my camera is old and I need to replace it, that also gets removed. And then, that's it. That's how we go from the original photo to the final edited one.